Elijah had the idea to build a tent uh, the other day. So we set up the tent here on the balcony. <laughs> One of the reasons why I'm filming here in the tent is that I can have pretty much quietness and more of a calmness here. Behind me, family life is going on, so I just try to come out here and record a video for you answering the question how you would react when God is speaking to you. When I was reading my Bible yesterday, I was reading about Cain, Cain and Abel, and Cain killing his brother Abel after this whole giving sacrifice situation. Abel is giving his tithes, his first, of his first fruits, to the Lord, and Cain is just giving an offering. God is rejecting Cain's offering and accepts Abel's offering. So Cain gets very angry, which is the first thing, and then God is telling him, hey, why are you angry? What's going on? Sin is at the door. Don't sin. You should rule over the sin. Then Cain goes on to basically plan out the murder, get his brother out in the field where they are alone, and kills him. Of course, God knows. God calls Cain and says, hey, where's your brother? You know, what's going on? His blood is crying out to me. First, Cain obviously, you know, tries to, to hide it and just play it down. But God confronts him and rebukes him and actually curses him. What I found very interesting about this whole passage is, is how Cain reacts to God speaking to him. Obviously, this is not just speaking anything, but rebuking him. Cain obviously falls into shame and guilt and self-pity and even curses himself even further than what God actually said. You know, says, oh, everyone should kill me, blah de blah And God says, no, you know, what I said is enough. No one should kill you. What I find interesting is Cain goes out from God's presence. After all that transpired, after God has spoken and God told him off a little bit and rebuked him for his wrongdoing and for his sin, killing his brother. Cain, I can imagine Cain just feeling rejected by God and feeling he had all this shame and guilt and self-pity and all this stuff and deciding to leave God's presence. So my question again is, how do you react when God rebukes you or God corrects you? Do you run away in your shame and guilt and maybe in your self-pity? Do you leave God's presence or do you seek God's presence? When you read Genesis 4 and read that whole incident, God never said, leave my presence. God never said, uh, never come back, you know, you don't belong here. No, he didn't. And yet Cain decided to leave and not come back. It just reminded me, and I hope it reminds you too, that when we fall, when we sin, and God does rebuke us through his word or in prayer or however, or through brother or sister, family member, that we do not run away, but that we seek the key that is only, you know, this key for our situation, that we seek that key in God's presence, because that's where the key is, only in His presence and nowhere else. So I just want to leave you with that, I want to encourage you with that today, that you do not run away from God, whatever your situation is, keep on going. Keep on seeking God, for the key is only in His presence. Pack your spiritual tent and get ready for war.